my boss flipped my schedule around on me today, so we're doing a morning video. So what's up? It's BD. Today I'm talking about how you can keep your penis pretty after and during penis enlargement. But first, uh, peak male physique for penis enlargement aids. They are not needed, but they can help, particularly in the situation I am talking about now. Uh, I have a Patreon if you want to support the cause, still working on building it out. And I have a, another site, leviathansups.com, to pre-order uh, our own blend of supplements. Might be worth your while. Anyway, so the problem with PE is that if you don't do it properly, you can make your dick uglier in the process. This happens in two ways. One, skin darkening and not like a good tan, but like a more of like an ashy color develops over time and two, skin migration. First, the easier one to solve is skin darkening. The simplest way is to stop PE for two to three months and then just moisturize the crap out of it two to three times a day. I can tell you from experience that your penis will be much lighter after eight to 12 weeks, almost back to its original tone. Now, it probably will never get back to its original tone because one, you increase the erection quality so it's gonna have a more of a red tone since you're pulling more blood into your penis. So there's that, but it'll more matchly or more closely match your shade that you are now. Now, to prevent discoloration, all you really have to do is shorten your hypoxic sets. So that would be your pumping and your clamping. For maximum growth or for maximum stimulus, I usually recommend 10 minutes per set for both clamping and pumping. However, if you're super concerned, about discoloration you will need to drop that down to five minutes but then double your sets to make up for the lost time additionally particularly for pumping you need to pump up slowly say take 30 minutes 30 minutes take 30 seconds to get up to max pressure and then don't go beyond 7 hg as those blood vessels really aren't designed to go over four to five hg once you over double that, that's when they reach the point of failure. Speaking from experience, I get my worst discoloration when I started pumping around 10 HG. This is because we are trying to avoid burst capillarities in the skin. So if you pump up too fast, it doesn't stretch like normally, it just rips open essentially. And then if you go well beyond its pressure threshold, it'll just burst that way. That is particularly an issue with bath mates because it's just a jerk motion down, right? So you need to do a nice slow motion with the bath mate and make sure you don't do max pressure. And additionally, keep your sets short of five minutes per session. Same thing goes for air pumping. However, it's much easier to control the pressure because it's a little hand gauge. So you can take your time getting up to pressure. Afterwards, after your sessions, particularly for girth, you want to do something called fire goat rolls. And that's basically where you take your penis and do fire starters all the way up and down the shaft for about two to three minutes. This will break up any trapped blood under the skin and have it process back into the body normally. Now this is anecdotal evidence and I have no experience with this whatsoever, but you can do a skin peel on your penis. I've seen it on the older forms, but even I have my reservations putting a caustic material on my penis. So, Keep that in mind that it can cause burns. I, I've i seen success done with it. It's just personally something I have my reservations about. On to skin migration. Now this one's a little bit harder to explain, therefore a bit trickier to treat and prevent. So basically all it is is that the skin, your skin on your shaft is not growing because we're not applying direct tension to the skin on the shaft. Therefore, as you make length gains, that skin needs to come from somewhere. And since your body is lazy and is going to take the path of least resistance, the skin that already exists is going to come up and cover that new tissue. So we're talking about the skin on the pelvis that surrounds the penis at the base, and then your scrotal webbing is gonna start pulling up to cover this new length. Additionally, since we're not stretching the skin of the shaft, we're actually stretching the skin at the hip. That skin's going to grow instead of the um, penis skin. So that is the gist. If you don't apply tension to the skin on the shaft while you are stretching it, 
then it's going to cause the base to slowly ride up and your testes to slowly ride up with it. And it's also possible for this to be genetically occurring. However, it is much more common for guys that have a tight circumcision to start. You can even have a form of base tenting and what we call turkey neck if you already have a tight circumcision. So keep that in mind. Like I said, this tends to be an issue for cut guys to begin with the skin migration, but it does happen to uncut guys. And it also depends on what exactly you're doing. Vacuum hangers will have a bigger issue with this than say compression hangers because compression hangers use the skin as an anchor point itself. So that causes a bit of stretching of the skin and vacuum hangers kind of just hold the skin in place and then pull. So obviously it's going to cause issues at the pelvis because that's what the skin that's where the skin is stretching now to prevent this it's kind of simple all you would really have to do is hold the pelvis skin down while you stretch now this is a little bit of a bitch because when you're hanging that means you have to sit there with your hands on your pelvis like this for an hour at a time and then same with stretching you have to push down with your pelvis and then pull out with your other hand on your penis so Kind of a pain in the ass. Additionally, you should probably be wearing a ball stretcher anytime you do static stretches. So, but essentially all that does is keep your skin tight at, uh, at the scrotal webbing. So when you pull up, it stretches the skin and not the ball sack or the ball sack doesn't pull up instead. Additionally, you can do foreskin restoration supplementally with your PE routine. This will be the fastest way and most surefire way to keep your skin nice and loose. Therefore, no pulling up at the base, keeping it as aesthetically as possible. On top of that, there's a good chance you will increase your sensitivity and it will make sex more pleasurable. Uh, I'm not going to go fully into it right now, but I have tried the TLC Tugger. That's a little more expensive than I would like to swallow, but it gets the job done and is custom fit to your penis. So if you plan on growing a lot, you might have to buy another one. And then I've also tried the four clip again. More expensive than I would like, but this one's nice because uh, it's more like set it and forget it. And if you have a large scrotal webbing to begin with, this will directly treat that. And you can wear it while hanging, in my experience, vacuum hanging in particular. But you might need to have a little more length than the typical guy to pull this off. So if you're absolutely dead set on trying to keep your dick as pretty as possible, keep your set short for girth, then you probably want to use something like a vacuum extender to get the most uh, tension applied to the skin and that'll also keep your ball sack back from pulling up. The problem is is that extenders in general are a bit of a pain in the ass to get on and off and there is a limit to how much tension you can have and it's also a little harder to control tension because the springs in the tension are not always apparent to see how much tension you are using. On top of that with the lower amount of hypoxic stimulant from the shorter stets sets in the girth work you may not be getting the same rate of gain as someone else but gains are gains you will still make them they just might be a little slower another important thing to note is that pumping itself can cause relatively extreme turkey neck if you already have a turkey neck um the easiest way to prevent it is one get a pump sleeve and that's just a silicone sleeve that goes around the bottom of your pump cylinder and then that'll keep your fat pad and ball sack from getting pulled in significantly and then get a ball stretcher like i said and wear that while you are pumping to keep your sack nice and tight that will keep most of your skin out now for bath mate users it's going to be quite uncomfortable since they kind of fan out to wear a ball stretcher at the same time so keep that in mind bottom line is is that the old way of doing pe can cause severe discoloration and skin migration especially if you're not careful about it and speaking from my own experience i am a victim of my old ways and the more i grow the more apparent the ugliness of pe can happen especially when you start off doing it hard and fast i didn't even start it off doing it hard and fast but when i got my bath made and stuff that's when the discoloration really kicked in <sighs> because you know high pressure longer sets and then uh, when I started stretching, I didn't do anything to keep the skin tight on my shaft. Therefore, when I'm erect, it looks like I'm an inch shorter than I really am. 
Not that it really matters, I'm married, but you get the gist. I am making this video to warn you guys that this is a possibility, especially if you go on the old forums, follow an old routine that doesn't take this new information into account. The important thing to know is that this is completely treatable. Basically, if you're one of the veterans that has an ugly dick, uh, you made the mess, you gotta clean it up. It's gonna take probably a year to get your penis looking somewhat normal, depending on how severe it is. And normal is a subjective term, I think my dick's fine, but I'm told a lot that <laughs> it's not the prettiest, and that's fine. And if you're just getting into PE, don't let this scare you off. Uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And additionally, my new beginner's routine version 3 takes this into account for the skin migration, so I'd walk you through of how to avoid this starting out. Now, you're not going to really notice it with your first half inch, but say your inch, inch and a half, and then that's when it's really going to start to be noticeable. So keep that in mind. Make sure you do supplemental foreskin restoration if you're super concerned about it or only use an extender. I think I covered it. Um, again, Leviathan Sups for pre-ordering my and Hank's new pre-workout and seminal volume supplement. Uh, Peak Male Physique for a lotion that may help with discoloration. Actually, I know it helps with discoloration, I just don't want to pitch my own product so highly. And then Patreon, if you want to support the cause, there might be coaching spots open. I'm not sure, I don't really keep track of it. But it's there, if you're interested, this is BD signing off.